What's up fellas and fellerettes, I'm Graham, and in this long video, I'm gonna talk about a topic that while critical to college is also critical to life. So even if you aren't in college, I hope you'll continue watching. And besides spiritual matters, uh, this is also one of the most important things I can make a video about. Of course, when you hear what it is, you're gonna grow on because it's a no-brainer. But I really do believe the information in this video could help a lot of people and solve a lot of problems in our society. None of this, what I'm about to say is original. Everything I'm about to say is taken from a book I read over break, and I'll tell you what the name of the book is at the end of the video if you're interested. So, what is the secret ingredient to college and life? Well, if I were to tell you there was a miracle drug you could take that would improve your memory, guarantee that you live longer, make you not feel tired, cut your chances of car accidents by half, keep your weight in check, make exercising easier, help you have a better mood, reduce your chances of developing a mental illness, help prevent cancer and Alzheimer's, ensure your brain is developed correctly and more, you would rightfully throw the advertisement in the trash. There's nothing a human scientist or company could make that could do that. No drug could do that. You're right. No human could develop a drug like that. But God can, and he did. It's called sleep. Of course, you're rolling your eyes. It's so simple. All I have to tell you is to get eight hours of sleep each night, and you don't have to watch the rest of the video. Good job. But I wouldn't have listened to that advice. I just, I've heard it my whole life, and I haven't listened to it yet. So I had to read the book, and that convinced me. And since the vast majority of people don't like reading books and never will, no matter how good it is for them, I'm going to explain exactly everything I can about sleep, according to sleep researchers, and why it's so important. But I'm not gonna do a good job like the book does, so read the book, please. Before you launch into all the reasons you've heard why you don't have to sleep eight hours and you feel fine if you don't, here's two quick disclaimers. Researchers have proven that people who get too little sleep literally cannot recognize how impaired they are. And one night of eight hours sleep won't cut it. You have to have a consistent two to three weeks of eight hours sleep every night before the benefits I'm gonna mention in the video kick in. So if you don't, which you probably don't, Here's what's happening to your brain. Your brain develops and builds during sleep. As a child, all the brain developing happens, such as critical thinking, logic, math, and basic structuring. But during your teenage years, all the way through your early 20s, your brain continues building from back to front. And the front of the brain is where your social and societal skills are. And if you aren't getting sleep, you aren't allowing your brain to build and grow. It's not proven scientifically because of how few studies exist, but there's a surprising correlation between mental illnesses and lack of sleep in childhood or adolescence. It's not proven, so don't let that completely scare you, but lack of sleep causes problems elsewhere. What is proven is how your brain remembers stuff. In studies where people memorized a list of facts and then had to recall them 12 hours later, the subjects who had got sleep in between memorization and testing remembered a whole lot more. Even short naps around 30 to 45 minutes help retain memories. Basically, when you sleep, your brain moves your memories from short-term storage to long-term storage. There's been a lot of studies on this, but that's the simplest way to explain it. Another experiment that was scary was an impairment experiment. Subjects were tested for two weeks, and each day over the two weeks, they did a 10-minute exercise, testing cognitive abilities like pressing buttons that lit up. Just a row of buttons, they pressed the ones that light up. It sounds simple, but it proved a lot. The subjects who got eight hours of sleep every night performed near perfect the entire experiment. The people who got only four hours of sleep each night showed noticeable problems right off the bat. But the longer they kept going, and only four hours of sleep each night, their performance absolutely plummeted catastrophically off a cliff. Even the subjects who only got six hours of sleep, about what most people consider uh, sufficient sleep during college, by the time they got to day seven or so, their performance was so bad, it was as bad as someone who had pulled two all-nighters. And both categories of insufficient sleep, both four and six hours, by the end of the two-week study, they were performing, and here's the scary part, they were performing worse than someone who was fully intoxicated. Driving sleepy was just as bad as driving intoxicated. The results of the research is terrifying. And as mentioned near the beginning, most subjects knew they were not getting enough sleep. They admitted it, but they rated their performance as close to perfect. They thought they were doing an awesome job. They did not realize how impaired they were, just like a drunk person. The people without enough sleep were just as bad as a drunk person. So those are all the things you don't exactly notice, or if you do, you won't care about anyway. You're getting passing grades, you don't have to worry about your memory, you haven't wrecked yet, you're fine on so little sleep. But here's another thing that hits a little harder. So there's two types of sleep. Rapid eye movement sleep where your body dreams and non-rapid eye movement sleep where your brain develops through strong electrical brain waves. That's a super simple way of explaining it, it doesn't cover nearly everything, but basically in REM or rapid eye movement sleep, your brain sharpens its relational tuning for it. It helps you judge human faces from the range of threatening to friendly. In an experiment, subjects with eight hours of sleep flawlessly detected a range of faces and judged them as approachable or friendly or threatening. The results were near perfect. 
then subjects with six hours of sleep, once again, six hours is considered generous for college students, rated the vast majority of the faces as unapproachable and threatening. They didn't think even friendly faces were approachable in some cases. The relational tuning fork wasn't given time to refocus during REM sleep, and REM sleep is strongest during the last two hours of your eight hours of sleep. Of course, social media plays a part in our generation not being good in real social conversations and circumstances, but this makes it even worse. When we don't get enough sleep, we assume everyone is unapproachable and in a bad mood. We can't judge how people really look and feel. Our outlook on the world sees it as threatening. We don't want to talk to people. It makes us feel lonely. So that's the bad stuff. That's a lot of bad stuff, and that's not even half of it. But the solution is so, so simple. Sleep. Sleep for eight hours, at the very least seven and a half. Just do it, just sleep. It's not like you have to eat a salad with dressing without dressing every day or run six miles every day. Just literally lay in bed and sleep. That's all you have to do. And that's the only advice I have, sleep. But sleep not only prevents all that bad stuff, it helps the body in other ways. It helps us stay in shape and eat right. It makes our exercise easier and healthier. There are studies to back all this up as well. It helps memory and performance of grades, and it helps our mood and brain development. So here's some tips on how to get sleep in college because no one likes sleeping in college. Number one, do not, I repeat, do not use sleeping pills under basically any circumstance. I'm not gonna, a doctor, so I can't explain why, but the scientist in his book that I'm gonna discuss in the video does. Just don't use sleeping pills. Basically, in the oversimplified version, they sedate your brain, but they don't actually let it sleep. So all the processes and benefits you get while sleeping don't actually happen when you're sedated through a sleeping pill. Number two, and this one helped me a lot, is you don't have to go to bed early. All humans have a circadian rhythm, but not all ages have the same circadian rhythm. For little children, their circadian rhythm is from like nine at night to six or seven in the morning. For older adults, it can be as early as eight at night to four or five in the morning. But for teenagers and college students, it's from around 11 or 12 to seven or eight in the morning. Once you hit 25, it slowly begins to move up and up earlier in the evening when you want to go to bed. So going to bed early at nine or 10 is almost stupid for a college student. I mean, every person's circadian rhythm varies, so if you do go to sleep, then that's great. Just don't force yourself to, don't think you have to. The general advice of go to bed early and wake up early doesn't help everybody. Every decade of age is different, so don't force yourself to go to bed earlier than midnight if you just can't. Just make sure you sleep later. If you can help it, don't have an 8.15 class. Take naps in the early afternoon before three to recharge. They aren't a substitute for sleep, they just help in addition. You can't catch up on sleep, you just lose it. So try to wake up and go to bed at the same time each night. And if you genuinely have sleep insomnia where you can't sleep, there's sleep therapists that help a lot more scientifically than sleep pills can. So encourage others not to hate on sleep. Respect it when someone goes to bed early or sleeps in just a little bit. Sleeping past 10 or 11 I think is a little ridiculous if you're properly getting eight hours of sleep every night. But I used to think you had to get up at six or so every morning and every day on after that was lazy. But people are different. It's okay to sleep till eight to get your full eight hours as a teenager, as a college student. One last thing that's somewhat unrelated but a bonus fun fact is that sleep uh, almost completely destroys evolution. Think about it. Why did we evolve to sleep? Did the first clump of cells decide to just take a nap? and then get, not get attacked. I mean, the supreme being of evolution, humans, if we believe scientists, lies on his back, unprotected from threats and danger for eight hours. And if evolution is true, then why are we not evolving to sleep less and less and have zero problems? Uh, when we do that, we die quicker. So evolution should favor the people that sleep less, but it kills them off. So just a thought to think about. But to finish this video, if none of this convinces you, that's fine. You could have a you know, perfect sleep every uh, eight hours every single night and you still die in a car crash at age 20. And then you could, uh, you know, not get much sleep your entire life and you'll have a great life, but you'll just age faster and die a little bit younger with a greater chance of Alzheimer's and cancer. That's just the facts. If you're really interested and want to become a sleep fanatic like I now am, the book that details all this is called Why We Sleep by Matthew Walker. He's a PhD, it's academic read, but it lays out all the evidence way better and more convincingly than I ever could. But in short, just sleep for eight hours every single night. You'll be great.